Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to the Independent Schools of the Year 2020 Awards. This is the third year Independent School Parent Magazine has hosted these awards and it is our first virtual awards ceremony. So thank you all for tuning in and embracing the challenges of the current climate. In what has been a truly testing year, here at ISP we have been pleased to continue publishing our magazines in print or digital format throughout the pandemic and we're delighted to mark the successful reopening of schools at the start of the autumn term with this awards ceremony. The purpose of Independent Schools of the Year has always been to celebrate excellence across the sector and this year more than ever independent schools have demonstrated their resilience and inventiveness. The quality and number of entries received has been greater than in any previous year. Understandably, the awards nominations that particularly impressed our independent judging panel are those which focused on the sizeable contribution made by schools to support the national response to the pandemic. The support of community projects and positive real life stories emanating from schools are astounding. And as a little teaser, our rising star of the year is particularly true in this respect. Here at Independent School Parent, we pride ourselves on being the independent education publishing specialists, and we will continue to support the sector with these awards and through our portfolio of education magazines and websites. In addition to the regular frequency titles, we will shortly be publishing our International Schools Guide, Great British Education, encouraging more parents from overseas to choose a British independent education for their children. And we have also recently launched a website dedicated to helping schools promote their virtual open days. Anyway, I'm sure everyone is desperate to find out who our winners are. So without further ado, I'm delighted to hand over to the chair of the judging panel, Dr. Helen Wright, to start the award ceremony. So thank you, James. And as chair of the judging panel, I'd really like to thank you, Chelsea and Independent School Parent Magazine for supporting these awards, because without you, we couldn't do them. So thank you very much indeed. Now, it's incredibly important, especially at a time like this, when there is so much uncertainty in the world, that the independent school sector has a platform where we can focus on the amazing things that our schools are doing to support children and young people, as well, in fact, as their families and their wider communities. When people write the history of this pandemic, I venture to suggest that independent schools will emerge as the guardians of the essence of normality, as well as guardians of a commitment to really top quality education that is seen not just on a national level, but an international level. And what's special about these awards today is that they celebrate arguably the core of that education, the core of what we seek to do in schools. What we're celebrating today is the student experience, the experience that our students have at school and how they're enabled to grow, develop, thrive and flourish. Now, they have been really hard to judge, I will say. We've had to whittle down over 300 entries to a single winner in each category. We've read scores of stories of amazing initiatives and stories of phenomenal students. And all credit to the wonderful panel of judges, many of whom are going to be making some of the awards today. And I'm hugely grateful to them for their challenge, their wisdom, their insight. Now we have merely chosen the school in each category, which in our opinion edged above the rest, but it was a very high bar in every single case. So really well done to everybody. So now to the awards themselves. I'm going to announce the finalists in each category. Then I'm going to invite each of my fellow judges to do the final reveal about who has won in each category. But do remember, you are all, quite simply, amazing. So well done. We start with the award for Independent School of the Year for Student Wellbeing. The finalists are Cardiff Sixth Form College, Chinthurst Preparatory School, Dulwich Prep Cranbrook, Lord Wandsworth College, Seaford College and Tasis, the American School in England. And to announce the winner, here is Charlotte Avery, Headmistress of St Mary's School, Cambridge. And the winner of the Independent School of the Year Award for Student Wellbeing is Lord Wandsworth College for their inspirational commitment to character education and enhancing the emotional environment of the school. 
Well done. Now to the Independent School of the Year for Healthy Eating. The finalists are Marlborough House School, Notting Hill and Ealing High School, Nottingham High School, Port Regis, St George's School Ascot and the Kingsley School. And to announce the winner, Andrew Fleck, Principal of Sedborough School. And the winner of the Independent School of the Year Healthy Eating Award is... Nottingham High School for its energetic promotion of healthy eating, nutrition and opportunities to gain skills in cooking and food preparation throughout the school. Well done. Next, the Independent School of the Year for Sporting Achievement. The finalists are Godolphin and Latimer School, Hurst College, Ipswich School, Lewiston School and Strathallan School. And to announce the winner, here is Tori Gillingham, CEO of AMKIS. And the winner is Hurst College for their focus on recognising the physical and mental value of sport and sharing it with the wider community, including the children of key workers during lockdown. Well done. And now, the Independent School of the Year for the Performing Arts. The finalists are Bloxham School, Bournemouth Collegiate School, Morton Hall, Norwich School, Trinity School Croydon and Wells Cathedral School. And to announce the winner, here is Colin Bell, CEO of COBIS. And the winner is... Wells Cathedral School for really living their philosophy of be what you can be through their elite and general programmes. Well done. Next, the Independent School of the Year for Student Careers Programme. The finalists are Highgate School, Hurst College, Morton Hall, Portsmouth High School, Queen Victoria School and Thornton College. And to announce the winner, Vivian Durham, CEO of the Girls' Schools Association. And the winner is Thornton College. So, well done to Thornton College for Independent School of the Year for Student Careers Programme. And they have won this award for covering a wide range of careers and future opportunities. Uh, from university to apprenticeships and they are supported by a significant business community. So very well done to Thornton College. Now we turn to the Independent School of the Year for Community Outreach. The finalists are Longacre School, Magdalen College School, Millfield School, Shrewsbury School, Tunbridge School and Withington Girls School. And to announce the winner, here is Robin Fletcher, CEO of the Boarding Schools Association. And the winner is, and the joint winners are Shrewsbury School and Longacre School. Shrewsbury impressed the judges with the sheer breadth and scope of their community outreach, especially during the national lockdown and the Longacre's commitment to bring four-year-olds to learn al alongside the residents of a retirement village was inspirational. Well done. Next, the independent pre-prep of the year. The finalists are Elstree School Pre-Prep, George Heriot School, Kingsley Acromont, Langley School, Penthorpe, and Wellesley House. And to announce the winner, Philippa Scuds, Director of Marketing and Communications at Canford School. So I'm delighted to be able to present the award for the pre-prep of the year in the Independent School Awards. I'm going to open the envelope. 
And the winner of the Pre-Prep of the Year Award this year is George Herriot School for the wonderful range of creativity in their educational offerings. Very well done. We follow the Pre-Prep Award with the Award for Independent Prep School of the Year. The finalists are Blundell's Preparatory School, Caldicott, Claremont Fancourt Preparatory School, Cottesmore School, Perrot Hill, Rowan Preparatory School and St Hilary's School. And to announce the winner, here is James Priory, Headmaster of Tunbridge School. And the winner is... St Hilary's School for their energy, super range of activities and demonstrably strong school values. Well done. Now, the award for Independent Boys School of the Year. The finalists are Parkside, Stuart's Melville College, University College School, Warwick School and Whitgift School. And to announce the winner, here is Jim Massey, Headmaster at Danes Hill Prep School. And the winner is... Whitgift School for their compelling written entry which radiated the school's inclusive and collaborative values in the context of an all-boys environment. Well done. Next, the award for Independent Co-ed School of the Year. The finalists are Epsom College, Hurst College, Monkton Coombe School, Reigate Grammar School, St Dunstan's College and the Glasgow Academy. And to announce the winner, here is David Moncrief from Independent School Parent Magazine. And the winner is... St Dunstan's College for their Renaissance education, their pupil voice and their championing of the individual. Many congratulations. And now, the award for Independent Girls School of the Year. The finalists are Harrogate Ladies College, Notting Hill and Ealing High School, St Helen and St Catherine, the Mary Erskine School and Wickham Abbey. And to announce the winner, James Priory. And the winner is Notting Hill and Ealing High School for their bold encouragement of initiatives and programmes that support the development of strong young women who have a clear voice. Well done. Now the award for Independent Boarding School of the Year. The finalists are Bryanston School, DLD College London, Elstree School, Rugby School, Sherburn Girls and West Buckland School. And to announce the winner, here is Tory Gillingham. And the winner is... Oh, the joint winners are DLD College and Elstree School who together represent the astonishing breadth of great boarding in the UK, including innovative sixth form boarding in the heart of London and flexible family style prep school boarding. Well done. Next, we have the award for Small Independent School of the Year. The finalists are Bruton School for Girls, Gilroyd School, Horace Hill, Sunningdale School and Truro High School for Girls. And to announce the winner, here is Charlotte Avery. And the winner of the Small Independent School of the Year is Truro High School for Girls for their ambitious and inclusive approach to education 
offering an enormous range of opportunities for their students. Well done. We turn now to the British International School of the Year. The finalists are Alice Smith School, Kuala Lumpur, Dubai College, Kellett School, Hong Kong, and the Polish British Academy of Warsaw. And to announce the winner, here is Robin Fletcher. And the winner of the award is Kellett School, Hong Kong, for their sustained promotion of British educational values through their Positivity Kellett Community Strategy to cultivate well-being in what has been a particularly challenging year for the region. Well done. Next, the Green Award for Environmental Achievement. The finalists are Kings Monkton School, Putney High Junior School, Ripley Court School, South Hampstead High School, St Ives School and Sydenham High School. And to announce the winner, Andrew Fleck. And the winner of the Green Award for Environmental Achievement is South Hampstead High School for their great energy, commitment and really practical action to promote and ensure sustainable, positive environmental change. So important, such a good achievement, well done. And now, the Marketing Award for Brand Communication. The finalists are Fetis College, Handcross Park, Malvern St James, Sebra School in Casterton, Sherburn Girls and Sherburn School, and St Paul's School. And to announce the winner, here is Colin Bell. And the joint winners are Malvern St James and Hand Cross Park for Malvern St James's alumni focused campaign linking past, present and future pupils, instilling pride across the community and Hand Cross Park's creative and integrated campaign conveying a real sense of energy and excitement. Well done to you both. Next, the Independent School of the Year for International Student Experience. The finalists are DLD College London, Plymouth College, Sedborough School, St Andrews Prep Eastbourne and Strathallan School. And to announce the winner, here is Jim Massey. And the winner is... Strathallan School for their care for and commitment to international students, ensuring their successful integration and engagement in the school community. Well done. And now, Independent School of the Year for Contribution to Social Mobility. The finalists are Beach House School, Highgate School and Trinity School Croydon. And to announce the winner, here is Vivian Durham. And the winner is Beach House. Congratulations Beach House, winning the Independent School of the Year for contribution to social mobility. And Beach House has won this award for living and breathing social mobility, making what can only be described as the most enormous difference to the lives of young people and their community in Rochdale and beyond. Huge congratulations to everybody at Beach House. And now we turn to the Rising Star of the Year Award. Nominations for this award are made by schools on behalf of individual students who have shown some outstanding personal achievement. And the winner is in fact determined by the Independent School Parent Magazine team. The finalists this year are Benjamin Ingram Moore 
from Bedford School, Ian So from Concord College, Kai Thomas from Edgeborough, Difford Farnham from King's Monkton School and Catherine Barmer from Middleton College. I'm going to invite the head of the Winners School to speak and tell us more about this extraordinary young person. And the winner this year is Benjamin Ingram Moore from Bedford School. Hello, my name's James Hodson, I'm headmaster at Bedford School and this on my left, on your right, is Benji Ingram Moore uh, who's been with us actually since the age of seven, which is the age our prep school starts at and before that was in a half a trust uh, pre-prep school that feeds this school from the age of three, so he's been around for a long time, he's going into the lower sixth at the moment um, and he will be known to you as the grandson of Captain Tom Moore, Sir Tom Moore um, who's uh, been living with Benji actually since the age of three. So they've, they've well, Benji's grown up with his grandpa, hasn't he? Absolutely. And um, as you may have seen, uh, we, we had the opportunity earlier this year uh, to host a whole load of birthday cards. So what, what happened was, I think the family uh, realized that they were gonna get rather too many cards um, yes, to, to handle in their front room. So they um, came to an agreement with us that we would take the cards here and on the first Tuesday, uh, from memory 30,000 cards turned up in about 180 different boxes and it became fairly um, obvious to us it was going to take an hour a box uh, per person to uh, unload um, and obviously there's some money inside as well so we had to unload all 140,000 in the end. Um, we had a huge team for a couple of weeks it was really good fun we had a great day on, on Captain Tom's birthday um, and, uh, and at the end of it all um, the cards remained in our hall for, for quite a long time and, and are now being put to good use elsewhere. So uh, Benji's been absolutely amazing the whole way through. He's learned an awful lot. It's brilliant to have him back with us. So he's been, uh, it's, it's difficult to imagine quite what he's been through in the last six months. Must be a little bit odd to be back at school, isn't it, Benji? Slightly. I mean, after working since pretty much March on trying to raise as much money as possible, it is interesting being back in the school environment, but thoroughly enjoying it. Yeah. So. Uh, so Benji will, will tell you a little bit about what he's done. We're, we're incredibly proud of him and it's an absolute delight that he's getting this award today. <laughs> Hello, I'm Benji Ingram Moore, or probably more well known as Captain Tom Moore's grandson. I think it's best I take you back to the start, right back to the 5th of April, when, I mean, the family was in a bad situation like everyone else at the start of COVID. All sitting around a family barbecue as my grandfather is walking up and down the driveway. It's almost, almost a family kind of joke at the start. My, grand, my father said, I'll give you a pound a lap for your 100th birthday, hoping to raise maybe a thousand pounds. My mum started looking into opening a Just Giving page and it almost took off from there. I mean, in the first three weeks, we were getting millions upon millions. At one point, we were raising three million pounds a day. The cards started flooding in, as described by Mr. Hodson, 30,000 a day, I believe which is absolutely incredible. The volunteers who were at this amazing school were amazing coming in in their heart, free time in such a difficult time of the year. It was a huge thank you to everyone who came. I think a word to describe the whole journey, I don't think you can, I think it's a blur. I think that's the perfect word for it. But going to these amazing people, meeting these, going to these amazing places, meeting these amazing people is an experience for myself that I didn't think ever would come going to Windsor, Windsor Castle, meeting the Queen, meeting the likes of David Beckham, Michael Ball. It's just an experience I didn't expect I'd ever have. But it's a pleasure being back at school after what does seem like quite a long summer. I'm really looking forward to carrying on this journey with my grandfather. We're looking at starting the Captain Tom Foundation now, which are hopefully going to inspire hope where it's needed the most. Looking at combating loneliness, helping those facing bereavement and looking at education where the system doesn't quite reach, especially educating girls in places they may not get the same rights. Hopefully we can carry on this journey. We may not be able to reach 40 million like we did last time, but if we can even get a touch upon that, it'd be the most amazing target for us. And anybody who can get behind us, that would be an absolute pleasure to see. Lastly, this award, thank you to absolutely everyone who helped me get on this journey. I, last year, sitting my GCSEs, this wasn't what I imagined, but it's an absolute pleasure to gain this award and I really hope I can push on from here. 
So that's Benji. He's always been a rising star, but it's brilliant that you've realised that and that it's, he's been brought to the attention of, of the wider world. He's a great guy and um, thank you so much indeed for uh, recognising him in this way. Young people are who our schools are all about. They're the only reason we exist. They're the only reason we do all that we do. So it's wonderful to be able to recognise that with the Rising Star of the Year Award. We have two final awards, however. Two final awards which recognise the schools who actually make that magic happen. I'm going to bow out now. I'm going to say thank you very much for coming. And I'm going to hand you over to Julie Robinson, or the CEO of ISC, who's going to make those two final awards and say a few things. So I look forward to seeing you in due course. And again, a huge well done to you all. Thank you, Helen. Well, what a joy it is to come together through these independent School of the Year awards to celebrate the great things that schools have achieved in the face of adversity. It has been a trying time on many fronts and 2020 will be remembered as one of the toughest years in global history, yet schools continue to make a positive difference. Independent schools have demonstrated their customary adaptability and innovation in the face of international crisis. We've been forced to reassess what is really important to our communities and find new ways of working. We've been forced to reinvent the delivery of face-to-face -face communications, just as we are today. School communities in many cases have led the way and have become worthy examples of excellence in online learning and community support. As we've seen in this year's winning entries, our schools have reacted by resetting relationships, finding creative solutions, and they've been outward looking, coming together and sharing their work, connecting with the wider world for which they prepare pupils. They built kindness in the face of adversity and developed social conscience. Despite the harsh pressures and uncertainties bearing down on schools this year, many of which continue, our schools have triumphed as beacons of hope and positivity. Caring for young people, supporting the local community, these are surely priorities even more so this year. And the school that wins this final prize will represent all that is good about independent education in a most memorable year. With congratulations to all nominees, finalists and winners today, it's now my honour to announce two final awards. The first, a special award, made this year by the judges to a school which we felt was brimming with energy and offering something really special in the sector for its students, combining old and new approaches to education. It has been recognised as a winner in one of our other categories today, and we felt as a judging panel that it deserved particular recognition for student well-being and urban boarding. The winner of the judges special award is DLD College. Congratulations. And finally, the Independent School of the Year Award 2020. This award was chosen by the judges from amongst the winners of all the categories, taking into account every aspect of the awards and honing in especially on impact and quality of student experience. And the winner of the Independent School of the Year Award 2020 for outstanding contribution to student experience in their own school and beyond, working tirelessly and positively, changing the lives of their own students and the lives of people in the much wider community, is Shrewsbury School. 
and here to accept the award is the headmaster, Leo Winkley. Thank you very much, Julie, and thank you to Dr. Helen Wright and the judging panel. Uh, we are absolutely thrilled uh, to accept this award, uh, and on behalf of the pupils and staff uh, at Shrewsbury School, uh, I am so pleased uh, that we have been recognised uh, in this way. Uh, community outreach uh, means a huge amount to us here. We feel very much part of the wider community of Shrewsbury uh, and Shropshire, uh, and we want to continue to be an active part, working to mutual benefit with uh, colleagues in the education setting uh, and uh, healthcare uh, and in other ways uh, to bring benefit to uh, our local community and also to share in the richness of life uh, around us. Uh, we also have a strong link with our youth club uh, up in Everton, uh, which is over 100 years strong. Uh, and it's activity like that that really brings rewards uh, for our pupils uh, and staff as they engage there. I think this is also a wonderful opportunity to celebrate the good work done by schools up and down the country in the area of community outreach and engagement uh, in partnership activities. We're just one example of so very many uh, schools doing this kind of thing. Uh, and it's very much in the essence, actually, of independent schools to be engaged in their local communities. We're not islands, uh, and we're not doing this for reasons of window dressing or because people are breathing down our necks. We're doing it because it is part of our identity. Uh, to be educating children to care about the communities of which they're part uh, and to be young leaders who go out with a sense of social responsibility uh, to lead lives that actually impact positively on others. So uh, I accept this award very much uh, gratefully from the perspective of Shrewsbury School but also take this opportunity to pay uh, tribute to all my colleagues working in schools up and down the land uh, in the area of community outreach. It's part of our past it's part of our present and it's absolutely part of our collective future to be doing this kind of work. So thank you everybody and all power for the future uh, of community engagement in our schools. Well, that brings the curtain down on Independent Schools of the Year 2020. As in previous years, we will be publishing a special winner supplement in the spring to coincide with the launch of the 2021 awards. All that leaves me to say is thank you, Helen. Thank you, judges. Thank you to Chelsea Magazine's digital team for pulling this ceremony together. And thank you all for tuning in. And of course, many congratulations to our winners.